Tell us a bit more about the, the nature of the relationship, though, with Many Rivers. Uh, we only just touched on it there with David. So Absolutely. Um, Westpac's involvement is really predicated on providing financial inclusion to disadvantaged Australians who wouldn't otherwise be able to access credit to start or grow an enterprise. Uh, it's quite a, a unique program. Uh, it's something we are exceptionally passionate about because, uh, as a large bank, uh, we've got a number of people in our community who really can't access the full range of services that you and I and many viewers of this program would take for granted uh, when it comes to accessing uh, financial services. So what's the link with Many Rivers then? How does that kind of partnership work? Uh, it's a strategic alliance. Um, many Rivers, uh, in many ways, is, is an offshoot of Mission Australia, and uh, Westpac and Mission Australia have been uh, partners in many ways for uh, over 100 years. Uh, we, we've got a very long-standing corporate banking relationship with Mission. Uh, we also partnered together on a range of social initiatives, uh, and Mission uh, presented us this opportunity to work with Many Rivers a couple of years ago. So it's really emanated from that uh, base relationship uh, with Mission Australia. Well, it's really hard, I think, for micro-enterprises to get capital, let alone indigenous micro-enterprises, so it's a real challenge. How are you going to measure your success through this program? Many of our success measures are aligned strongly to what many rivers themselves are measuring. Um, getting money back on the loans uh, might sound like it would be the obvious uh, measure of success. Uh, look, I would suggest that it's important, but it's not the most important. Uh, we really want to assist people build a sustainable business. Uh, you need access to capital to do that, uh, and that's not a given for, for many people. Uh, so what, what we're going to be measuring here with Many Rivers over the medium to long term are the number of sustainable businesses that uh, we actually get off the ground. Your experience with micro-loans and micro-businesses, tell me, uh, what's the rate of repayment like? Is it a, a high-risk proposition for you? Uh, it's not as high a risk as it sounds. Uh, globally, uh, micro-loan programs um, often quote 98, 99% repayment rates. Um, we're experiencing about a 90% repayment rate on loans. Uh, that's not on-time repayments, uh, so certainly a lot of these borrowers um, have a lot of the day-to-day -day challenges managing cash flow and getting money back uh, in to make a loan repayment. Uh, but by and large, it's about a 90% repayment rate, uh, which I think is actually quite good. Um, some of the program uh, here really is, is different to what happens offshore. Um, in many ways we're competing uh, with the welfare system, so, so we're looking for highly motivated Australians who want to break that welfare dependency cycle and uh, as you've suggested, starting a business is exceptionally it's challenging. It's really interesting, isn't it? It's because in this area, your competitor is actually Centrelink not another bank. That, I mean, that's the fascinating thing. In many ways it is, uh, and uh, look, we've, we've certainly worked closely with the Commonwealth Government and, and they're providing some funding to this program, and, and I think a lot of people in Canberra now realise that welfare is not necessarily the answer, and, and welfare does play a critical role in helping many Australians um, who are living below the poverty line uh, in, in particular, and, and also there's an enormous range of services that the Government uh, does need to provide, but, uh, but certainly access to finance. Uh, there's a real capacity now for a major bank a not-for-profit organisation, a range of NGOs uh, and also some very large uh, corporate entities to work together in a collaborative way uh, to actually bring a program like this to life. Sinclair, recently there was some criticism in some broader media about Many Rivers and basically the cost of the operations and also some of the loan volumes. What, what's your view on, on, on that uh, article and the kind of, maybe the criticisms that were levelled at, at Many Rivers? Sure, uh, look, uh, we, we remain very supportive of the program. Um, this program is challenging uh, and we went into this with our eyes open and I know all of the other funders of the program have done the same as us. Um, they've certainly looked at uh, how difficult a market it is uh, to get into. Uh, it's a very expensive program to deliver. That said, uh, the economies of scale will improve over time. So Many Rivers uh, is a newish organisation and, and with any uh, start-up uh, there's always upfront costs and, and those costs will, uh, I think, be diminished over time. Um, but certainly from a, uh, an output point of view, what's important to remember here this year, Many Rivers is on track to assist 145 Australians start an enterprise. Yeah. Uh, and that's a tremendous success uh, from our point of view. And I don't think you can put a dollar value on the transformational change that will have in those people's lives. Uh, so it is an expensive program, but as I say, we may, re, re, remain very committed to it. In a real sense, that's 145 Australians who a few years ago would have had no chance of starting up their own business. That's right. Um, for people who are facing disadvantage, uh, there aren't too many options when it comes to, to, to finance. And uh, certainly mainstream credit is often elusive. It's too far away. Uh, these types of borrowers don't necessarily have capital uh, or, or collateral, I should say, uh, to put up for loans. Uh, and also be because they're welfare dependent in many circumstances, uh, we don't often consider that from a mainstream point of view as uh, sufficient income or, or suitable income, I should say, uh, to actually meet a, a, a loan obligation. Now, when 
Brooke introduced you, she mentioned the Davidson Institute. Mm. Now, I must say, this isn't something I'd heard about. I think it's just been set up this year. It, so w what is it? The Davidson Institute uh, is uh, Westpac's new brand for financial education. Uh, it really builds on a 10-year commitment we have had to delivering financial education programs in the community to help small business owners, mums and dads, school leavers, a whole range of people understand financial concepts. Uh, so we launched the Davidson Institute uh, in late April uh, as a way of providing access to all Australians to basic financial literacy. Uh, that said, there's also uh, diploma level qualifications on offer. We've got a, uh, a branch network program, so through over 300 Westpac branches, um, every Australian can access these services and actually come to some free seminars uh, on a range of topics. And importantly, you don't have to be a Westpac customer uh, to participate in the uh, courses and seminars on offer from the Davison Institute. Maybe just to finish off, maybe you can give us some other examples of some of the initiatives then you're involved with, kind of knowing that broader uh, picture now as well. Yeah, sure. So uh, Westpac has a very strong commitment to uh, social responsibility and sustainability. Uh, one of the other programs that we are supporting in the microfinance space is a program uh, called Good Return, uh, which is run by World Education Australia, a, another not-for-profit organisation. And that's a really innovative program which matches Australian donors uh, with offshore borrowers. And uh, they can go online and, and find a borrower that they would like to support and, and actually get a sense of where their money is going. Fantastic. Sinclair Taylor, thanks so much for joining us, uh, for joining Peter and I on Social Business. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you for having me.